special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the book cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, presents The Lone Ranger. Speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? You can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it tastes like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Jack Wells, the proprietor of the Gold City Gazette, held a bundle of newspapers under one arm as he walked through the open door of Barnaby Barnes Emporium. Inside the store, he paused and watched the plump proprietor tacking a chart to the rear wall. It was a familiar chart for testing eyesight, with lines of letters diminishing in size from top to bottom. As Boggs drove home the last tack and stepped back, Wells exclaimed, hey, what next? Huh? Oh, Jack! Top of the morning to you! Don't tell me you're setting yourself up as an eye doctor. Oh, not exactly. I seek only the serve the people of Gold City. Where'd you get that chart? Came with the eyeglasses. <laughs> eyeglasses? Right here, Jack. This whole case of them just arrived in St. Louis. Hmm. Maybe you're on the level. Yep, here are your copies this week's Gazette. Thank you. Your ad's on the back page. Yes, it's the back page. My ad's always on the front page. Well, not this week. It's crowded out by important news. Indeed. Let me see. What's more important than the money-saving values offered by the Emporium? A gold claim that might be worth a million dollars. Oh. Sam Bates died last week. His will was in the safe of Lawyer Sherwood. Sam left everything he owned to a man who once grubstaked him. An Englishman named Ed Winton. Uh, the luck of the British. Boggs' eyeglass advertisement appeared the following week on the front page of the Gazette, beside another article about the missing English heir. The newspaper was distributed to other towns, including Red Rock, where Tonto saw and bought a copy while shopping in the general store. The Indian rode from Red Rock to a nearby woods where the Lone Ranger waited in camp. Old scout, old fella. Easy scout, easy fella. Me bring food and saddlebag, Kimahabi. News and paper. Oh, good. Me unpack saddlebag while you look at paper. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Toto. You tell about Bobby Bob. Oh, yes. Here's his ad. And still run store in Old City. He seems to be keeping the promise he made us to stay out of trouble. Oh, me not sure. Oh, why? You read what I'm saying, man? 
You'll shoot straight, read better, and look better when you correct that faulty vision with eyeglasses from the Barnaby Boggs Emporium. Get rid of the bloodshot in your eyes, regain the healthy sparkle of youth. See where you go and what you eat. Enjoy life once again. <laughs> that sounds like things Bob say when in pedal cure-all medicine. It's Bob's way of talking, Tonto. Uh, me glad that Bob's not trying new skin game. We haven't seen you, old man, for a long time. Oh, Tonto, you see this article in the paper. And you only see what Bob say. Sam Bates is dead. Do you remember him? Sam Bates? Yes, a prospector we helped on the trail some time ago. Oh, yeah, me remember. He owned a claim in the Comstock load. That's plenty rich. And he left it to a man named Edward Winton, you also never... known as English Eddie. You never hear that name. Neither did I. His whereabouts is unknown. Him Englishman? Yes, he spent all of his life in England until a few years ago when he came to this country. Maybe him go back to England. It would be a shame if he lost the fortune that's waiting for him in Gold City. We'll be on the watch for him, Toto. Him young fella? Between 30 and 35. Uh, what he look like? Says uh, thin, six feet tall, brown hair and brown eyes. Has to wear eyeglasses. He's an expert pistol shot with either hand. And last seen, he wore hunting clothes made in England. There are further details about the clothes. At that moment, English Eddie was within ten miles of the Lone Ranger's camp. He stood in front of a mountain cabin, practicing with his pistol. The cabin was one of many that the Englishman and his two partners had occupied during the past two years in their search for gold. Eddie was sighting for another shot at the target when he saw one of his partners returning from town. He lowered his gun. Oh, 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 boy. Hi, Eddie. Hello, Ringo. Have you been all the way to Red Rock? Yeah. Yeah, I made good time. Is that pan inside the shack? Yes, Shall I help you carry in the supplies? No. Oh, yes, I got them. They're all in the saddlebags. Go on with your six-gun practice. Very well. I shall. Oh, Ringo. Didn't expect you for another hour or so. I didn't waste any time in town. You got the grub? Yeah. They're in the saddlebags. God, that constant gunplay is getting on my nerves. Don't complain about English Eddie. Oh, let's split up with him, Ringo. Nearly broke, and he refused to ride his folks in England for more money. You'll change your tune when you see what I brought from Red Rock. What is it? A copy of the Gold City Gazette. And here, read this. Ah, that shooting. English Eddie is an heir. Great Scott. A claim in the dump stock load. Well, Ringo, that must be worth a fortune. Yeah. Well, we're his partners, Ringo. We split three ways on any gold we find. That was our prospect and agreement. The agreement doesn't cover inherited money. Maybe we can make a deal with him before he learns what a Comstock claim is worth. Yeah. It's worth a try. No, 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 wait. I've got a better idea. Can you see him through the window? Yeah. He's reloading his gun. Let me know if he's coming in. Right. What's your idea? Let's leave Eddie out of the deal. You go to lawyer Sherwood. Call yourself Ed Winton and collect the inheritance. Ed Pan, I couldn't get away with Why him. Why not? You're lean six feet tall. You fit the description even to the brown hair and the eyes. And it says right here in the paper that no one in Gold City ever saw Ed Winton, except Bates, and he's dead. But I don't wear eyeglasses. Wear Ed's glasses and his clothes. And take his credentials to show Lawyer Sherwood. And what about Ed Winton? We'll have to get rid of him. One bullet in the right place. Uh, I savvy. I tell you, Ringo, we can put it over him. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but... What if I have to sign some papers? I can't copy his name the way it's written on his credentials. We'll make him sign his own name. But if he's dead, how's we'll he going to... We'll keep him alive until we're sure the inheritance. We'll hold him prisoner somewhere near Gold City. Hey, wait. He's coming toward the door. All right, I'll get the paper out of his sight. Now, let me handle things. Go ahead. It's your idea. Well, Eddie, to finish your target practice... I used all the cartridges I had with me. My dead pen. When started the preparation of our meat. Oh, oh... Ringo and I have been talking things over. We decided there's no use prospecting around here any longer. Yeah, we've been searching for a long time without finding a place worth staking. Uh, we've been searching in the wrong place. <laughs> Obviously. We'll move to the Gold City area. Uh, have you any reason to think we'll be more successful there? <laughs> I've got a hunch we'll strike it rich. Well, if you and Ringo wish to move, I'm outvoted. We'll pack our gear and move this afternoon. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power bomb Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say that Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power, you'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... <laughs> He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Ed Pan, Ringo, and Ed Winton traveled for two days. And at sundown on Friday, it grew rain in front of a cave near Gold City. Oh. Ed Winton didn't see Deadpan wink significantly at Ringo. The Englishman dismounted without the slightest suspicion that his partners planned to murder him. I say, this cave should make a first-rate shelter. Yeah, I remembered it from the last time I was around here. <clears throat> Ringo, you ready for the showdown? Yeah. Showdown? Yeah, Eddie. Would you mind letting me take a six-gun? Ringo and I want to settle a little bet. Oh, wager, huh? Now that's sporting. Here you are, dead man. What's the wager? Thanks. Get the rope on him, Ringo. All right, rope. Still, Eddie, you're covered. I say. Sorry, but we're going to tie you. No, no, let me go. Yeah, hold still. Uh, still uh, put a bullet. Uh, don't shoot him. Uh, uh, they need a signature. Uh, Crack him on the head. Uh, uh, That'll uh, stop him. Uh, oh. Yeah. He's stronger than I thought. Now tie him up. We'll drag him into the cave before he regains consciousness. You better take off that English coat for your time. Need that when you're calling the lawyer. Yeah. Hey, hey dead man, look. What? He dropped his glasses and stepped on them. They're smashed. Well, you'll never need them again. But I'll have to wear glasses when I call on lawyer Sherwood. And get a pair in the morning when you go into town. Huh? Bugs Emporium sells them. Says so in the paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, come on, give me a hand. We'll get this coat off. The following afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode into Gold City by a back road and reached the familiar stable behind Boggs' emporium without being seen. Tonto went to the store, while the masked man fed and watered Scout and Silver. Presently, Boggs entered the stable with Tonto at his heels. Thanks, so I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you, Barnaby. How's the store doing? Growing all the time, flourishing like the green bay tree. I've just added an optical department. Uh, Tonto and I saw your ad. Are many people buying glasses? Oh, not yet, but... Just wait till word spreads that the English Air is my customer. English Air? Ed Winton, sometimes called English Eddie. I addressed him as Sir Edward. <laughs> Pleased him no end. We uh, read about him. He saw the Gazette and came to town to claim his inheritance. His glasses were busted, so I sold him a new pair. He just left the store about an hour ago. Sure was a hard man to fit. He was? Yep. I'd read about him needing strong glasses... So I tried out the strongest one in stock. Then I told him to look at the eye chart and call off the letters. <laughs> well, sir, he looked at the top letter, the letter E, three inches high, and he called it Z. Z? Yes. I knew those glasses were no good for him, so I tried weaker ones, then even weaker, until I got down to the weakest ones in stock. Those are the ones he took. Hmm. You ask me, I'd say he doesn't need glasses any more than you do. I figure he wears them because he thinks they make him look distinguished. Oh, Boggs. Huh? Didn't that man spend most of his life in England? Yeah. That's what I thought. What did you say he called the letter E? Z. <laughs> Why? Are you sure he said Z? Yes. Not Zed? Zed? I never heard that. 
He said Z. Then he's not an Englishman. Huh? It's a fact that in England, the last letter of the alphabet is pronounced Z. No matter how long an Englishman is in this country, he'll never say Z. A lawyer sure would investigate it. Yeah, where's the lawyer's office? Over my store, on the second floor. All right, let's talk to him. Oh, Tonto, you stay with the horses. Ah. Meanwhile, beyond the edge of town, Ringo rode into the cave where Deadpan guarded the captive Englishman who was bound and gagged. Oh, 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 boy. Is it... Now, what about the inheritance? It'll be ours when I sign this paper. Good. I couldn't sign it in his office. He'd see the difference in my writing and that signature on the credentials. So I told Sherwood I'd have to take the paper with me and look it over. And do back in his office at 5 o'clock. Well, I'll un-gag, Eddie. Hold still, Eddie. I'll have to untie his hands so he can write his name. Yeah. Hey. What if the lawyer wants witnesses to the signature? I thought of that. When I go back, my right hand will be an advantage. Oh. I'll say I heard it and can't write. I'll have to write with my left hand. There you are, Eddie. You heard what Ringo said. You, you rotten thief. Well, I'll untie your hand so you can sign the paper. I'll never sign it. No? Well, you wait and see the tricks I know to make a man change his mind. Deadpan's methods would have broken the resistance of the strongest man. And finally, Eddie signed his name and gasped. Uh, I hope you're satisfied. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie, this looks fine. I'll tie his hands again. We'd better hold them until we're sure we don't need any more of his right. Good idea. Oh, you, you said you'd let me go. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> but not just yet. I'll be all set, Deadpan. If you bandage my right hand so I can tell a lawyer I heard it. <laughs> At five o'clock, when Ringo returned to lawyer Sherwood's office, wore glasses from the Emporium and English Eddie's hat and coat, his right hand was bandaged. He explained, Well, it's my own fault. I I should have made sure the gun was empty before I tried to work on the trigger spring. The hammer slipped and fell on a cartridge. It, it's lucky I signed this paper before it happened. I wanted you to sign it in front of witnesses. Oh, I didn't know that. In fact, I've had the witnesses waiting in the next room. Please come in, gentlemen. Hi, Sir Edward. Hello, Mr. Boggs. What? The other man's mask. Yeah. Are you Edward Whitten? Of course I am. It should be easy to prove, then. Well, there's my signature. Does it look bona fide, Mr. Sherwin? Yes, it does. Then Whitten must have signed it. But that's no proof that this man is Ed Whitten. Well, I, I can't sign my name again. My right hand is injured. You can identify yourself with your left hand. If that's what you want, I, I'll try to write my name with the left hand, but it'll look lots different. Uh, give me a pen. Use your gun. What? My gun? If you're Ed Whitten, you're an expert shot with either hand. But I do uh, Open that window, Bogus. Hey, right, right, sir. Whitten, there's a weather vane on the roof across the street. It's shaped like a rooster. It will spin if you hit the rooster's head. Oh, that's an impossible target. Well, is it? I'll find out. You hit it. I'll try it with my other hand. You hit it again. Your turn, Mr. Winton. I, uh, all right. Ringo knew that he was trapped. He looked through the window and drew his gun slowly while his mind was racing. Go ahead, Winton. He knew this was a showdown. Thoughts of the inheritance were gone from his mind. He was thinking only of escaping from a situation that might send him to prison. Why don't you fire, Mr. Winton? Ringo finally decided that his one hope lay in shooting his way out of the office. Suddenly, he turned toward the masked man. I'll fire! No, no, I say! I was waiting for that move. Uh, you, you smashed my gun. Yes. Your move to shoot me was a dead giveaway. Now, mister... Uh, let me go! I'm going to talk. Where's the real Ed Whitten? I, I don't know. He was alive and nearby when he signed that oh, paper. No. Where is he? Did I give you a lesson in speaking? People in the street who heard the gunfire sent for the sheriff who ran all the way from his office to the box emporium. He rushed upstairs to the second floor when he found Toto standing outside the closed door of the lawyer's office. What's going on? I heard there was gunplay in Sherwood's office. Me hear guns a little while ago. And then hear plenty bumping sound. Stand aside. I'll see what's going on. A friend say wait here. Well, I want to see you. Hello, Sheriff. Sherwood, what? Who's the masked man? I'll vote for him. What happened to that man? He had to be uh, persuaded to tell where the English heir is being held prisoner. I, I told all I know. Keep that masked man away from me. What's that about the English heir? Sheriff, this man posed as Ed Whitten in an attempt to steal the Sam Bates estate. Why, you ornery child. His partner is holding the real Ed Whitten in Pirate's Cave. 
Come on, Tonto. We'll go and get him. Uh, wait till I jail this critter and I'll go with you. The Lone Ranger led the way with Tonto and the sheriff following closely. Barnaby Boggs followed at a distance. The last man rode directly toward the cave. Come on, Tonto. Come on, Deadpan was inside the cave, guarding the Englishman. When he saw the oncoming men, realizing that he was about to be trapped, he rejected his first impulse to shoot the prisoner and leaped to the bare back of his horse in the slim hope of escaping. As he rode out of the cave, Deadpan fired wildly at the masked man. The Lone Ranger's gun barked quick reply. A silver bullet struck Deadpan's right arm. He dropped his gun and fell from his horse. Oh, no. oh easy, steady, big fella. Stay where you are, I'll shoot again. No, 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 shoot again, you got me. I'll take that gun so I'll not be tempted to use it again. No, shoot me. Be seated, Whitten, and cave. Get somebody. By the time Barnaby Boggs arrived, Whitten stood outside the cave, pale and unharmed, but squinting with the effort to see without his glasses. The sheriff was finishing a bandage on Dead Pan's arm. And the Lone Ranger and Toto were ready to mount their horses. It's all over, Barnaby. My, my horse! Couldn't keep up with you, I So this is Ed Winton. Well, I'm mighty proud to know you, Sir Edward. Boggs is the name. Barnaby Boggs. How do you do? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't see you very well. Broke my glasses, you know. Oh, oh, then I'm your man. Fix you up in no time at the Boggs Emporium. Have a, a line of the finest glasses you ever saw. Yes, sirree. I'll make a special price in return for a testimonial letter. <laughs> Barnaby, though you're slow on horseback, you're lightning fast when you see a business deal. Easy. Huh? Hey, you and Tonto aren't leaving so soon. Yes, we have other work to do. We'll see you again, though. I don't know. I never get to talk to the masked man as long as I'd like to. But anyhow, Winton... Hey, I want to be the first to congratulate you on your inheritance. <laughs> oh, but I'm sorry. You're not the first. I... The mask fan already has. Oh, damn rabbit. I never can get ahead of the Lone Ranger. I don't... Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Yes, champions are made, not born. That's the American way. Here's how one famous basketball champion got started. Jim Pollard of the Minneapolis Lakers. They called him Little Jumpin' Jim. Nothing short of the top for him. He practiced rebounds, layups, too, and followed what the champs all knew. Wheaties for breakfast, so good for you. Today, Jim plays with lots of bounds, still eats his Wheaties every ounce. Jim Pollard started eating Wheaties when he was 11. Been eating them ever since, 21 years. Solid food, Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Let's go, Jim, down the floor. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer, your announcer... The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.